Today we're talking about the free stuff, as in we're going to bring a camera from Unreal Engine 5 into DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. This is basically a compositing workflow, but a little bit simplified for beginners. The first thing that we're going to do is start in Unreal Engine 5. The first step is to bake this camera. We need all of the camera position data to be baked down into individual keyframes on every single frame. In addition to that, I also do recommend putting a placeholder in your scene to help give you a point of reference so that when you move things around in your compositing software, you have something to reference and look at. So I have in the scene a cube and I will turn that on right there. And let's say hypothetically, I wanted to put some type or text here. Now, this is just a reference. So I'm gonna take this cube and drop it into my scene and it's basically gonna be there for extra position data. Now, the first thing I have to do is click on my camera and go to this little wrench here and click on bake transform. This window pops up, set baked key settings to all keyframes. And this is gonna be set to all of the frames in my sequence. Click OK, and it's going to create a second transform property of that camera. Now this first one, let's just delete it. We don't need it anymore, and we also don't want the camera shake. Now before you do anything, it is also worth checking your camera. So you're gonna go to the beginning of your timeline and just watch it back. Does it have all the camera animation properties that we did previously before baking it? So let's hit the space bar, play it back. We can see that there's a little bit of wobble and sway with the camera in the same way that we had that little camera shake in our scene, but it's all baked down into keyframes here, which we can see by clicking on our sequencer. And hey, look, there's a lot of keyframes and stuff. Awesome. Let's just double check the rotation. Yep, everything's good. That's exactly what I want it to do. Back to the sequencer. Now we have our camera and we have our cube, our reference point. You can put this anywhere you want, but I know I'm gonna put some text right here. So we're gonna right click on these two objects and we're gonna go to export and we're gonna export this as an FBX. I'm gonna put this into a new folder and I'll just call this file sword camera animation 001. Sure. Now you'll see this window pop up. Don't touch anything. Set it, reset to default. If anything is checked, just let it go as is. Sometimes you might have to check this, but I don't recommend it most of the time. Just hit export, let it do its thing. Now we have to go into either DaVinci Resolve or Blender for a second, but we're gonna start with the DaVinci Resolve method first. Obviously, if we wanna do some compositing with the scene, we have to render this shot. So I'm gonna go up to my clapboard in my sequencer and I'm going to just do a very basic render here. Go into my settings, I'll get rid of the JPEG sequence just because of force of habit, I like using PNG sequences for my tests. I'm gonna add some anti-aliasing and I'm going to add a game overrides option. Not gonna do anything else fancy. Go into my anti-aliasing, set it to eight for the temporal samples, override anti-aliasing, anti-aliasing set to none, engine warm-up frames to 240 and render warm-up frames. Go into your output, set your render into wherever you want this to be saved. I'm gonna make a new folder and I'll call this tutorial camera animation into Da Vinci. Burp. Just like that, select folder. Okay, cool, make sure it's at the exact aspect ratio that we want, and this is important. If you're gonna be doing compositing, make sure that you are compositing in the output that you plan on rendering in for your final render. So 1920 by 1080 is perfectly fine for this. Click accept, and we are going to hit render. Now I realize I made a little bit of a boo-boo, so I'm gonna cancel that render really quick, and I'm gonna go into that cube. We don't want this in our scene, so make sure that your reference is turned off. So I'm gonna just uncheck the little eye, and then if that doesn't work for you, I also recommend going to the search bar details panel, and you're gonna type visible, V-I-S, and we're gonna uncheck visible right there. And then another thing, just to make sure, we're gonna type HID for hidden, and we're gonna look for actor hidden in game, and just also turn this on, which is kind of confusing, but that's besides the point. So now when we hit the clapboard, and we hit the render button, our scene is rendering, and we don't have that cube in our scene. So let's jump over to DaVinci Resolve and start compositing some type into this scene. With the Unreal Render done, we're in DaVinci Resolve and you're looking at the Fusion page right now. Before we get started, I wanna share with you that I do have a DaVinci Resolve course that is available for purchase online. I built this course to be designed for people who are complete beginners with video editors 
and users who have started in Adobe Premiere and they're like, how do I make the switch into DaVinci Resolve? It is six hours of beginner to advanced topics in DaVinci Resolve to help people get started with using the software. I want this course to be a useful tool so then if you're a 3D artist and you wanna post your work online, you understand what color grading tools to use. And if you're coming from Premiere, you know how to import footage and organize it in a way that feels seamless like Premiere. So if you'd like to learn more about that course, you can find links in the description down below. And for the rest of this video, let's learn about how to composite the scene that we just rendered. So with this scene here, I want to first load in my footage. So to get started, we need to add the footage that we just made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the shift space bar in the empty space, and I'm going to pull up a loader node. It, fortunately, it's already loaded because I was doing this tutorial earlier. Hit add, and it's going to look for the scene that we were rendering, or you need to find it because I've done some practice. It is here, so we're going to click on open, and now we have this scene. Nothing's happening because we have to pipe this into our media out. Awesome. Now we have our scene. The first method of importing an Unreal camera into DaVinci Resolve is not the one I recommend because it's a little weird and funky and scene scale just gets really confusing. So first off, we're going to go up to the Fusion tab, go to Import, FBX Scene, and we're going to find the animation that we just exported as an FBX. We're going to Select it, click open, and we're gonna see this window. You may need to do some weird fussing to adjust where your camera is pointing in your scene. It's weird and confusing, I get it, but you might have to change the axis in Fusion to adjust for the axis in Unreal. So for Unreal renders, I've just left this unselected, but by default, these two checkboxes will be selected. You may need to adjust your camera depending on where your camera is facing in your scene. With that out of the way, let's click OK, and we're going to see a bunch of nodes pop up here, but nothing's happening in our viewport because we need to connect it to all of this down here. To do that, we're going to first get rid of the root node because I like doing things a little bit more manually and it helps me organize everything how I want it to. We're gonna add something called a merge 3D node. And basically we're gonna take all these objects that are in our scene and combine it into this merge 3D, which is kind of like a faux 3D scene. But we're not seeing anything still because we need to connect it down here. So we're gonna next add a 3D render node. And then we're gonna take this 3D render node and the rightmost cube right here, or square, we're gonna connect this to the sword comp. And if we pipe that in, Hey, look, there's our cube in our scene. Now, the reason why I just despise the FBX method is because now our fusion comp is set to 24 frames based on the FBX import because DaVinci is doing some weird things. So to fix this, you're gonna go up to your fusion composition in your media pool, double click that, and it'll just auto correct the actual length. So with this cube here, we obviously wanna replace it, but instead we wanna make sure that we don't delete this cube. We wanna keep it, but we wanna make sure we take a note of this position data right here. So it's moved to the right by 34 units in fusion, and it's moved upwards by 118 units. So we're gonna add a text 3D by clicking on this button right here, and we're gonna add in some type, we'll call this Talon, which is the name of the sword, and we'll make this a nice purple because World of Warcraft weapons are purple in that game, which I love very, very much. And we can see here that it is not in our scene, and the reason why is we use this cube as our position data. So we'll go into the X and we'll type in 34, and in the Z we'll type in 118, or 108, one of those numbers and we'll figure it out in just a second. So if I were to uncheck this cube and then try and scale up this type, we're not gonna see anything, but we're seeing a little something right there. And the problem is that this type is rotated weirdly and funkily because of the way 3D scenes are translating between Unreal and Fusion. So let's play the dance of trying to orient this towards our camera. So I think it might be on the X. We set this to 90 and hey, that was the axis that we wanted. And now we have our type f facing more towards the camera. So now what we can do is we can just use our cube reference point position and let's say we wanted to be a little bit closer to our text and maybe we wanted to add some stats to this. So we can take this text 3D, control C, control V, pipe it back into the merge 3D node. Let's set this to like a nice white, like so. And then we can just type in plus one strength plus one stamina. 
and let's go into our scaling, scale it down, and orient it to the left or horizontally justify it and position this exactly where we want. And now we have the stats for this weapon composited into our scene. Now this is the basic version of importing a camera from Unreal Engine into DaVinci Resolve using an FBX. I don't like this method, and the reason why is you play a lot of dancing with the scene scale and whatnot, so that is the FBX workflow. Let's talk about the Alembic workflow next. So I have my scene here, and I want to bring the camera animation from Unreal into DaVinci Resolve, but unfortunately, Unreal will not let you export an Alembic file, so we need to open up Blender. Now, if you don't know how to use Blender, you can use the FBX method, but this, to me, I have found is more stable and easier a lot of the time, so if you can stomach downloading Blender and giving it a shot, it is worth it. I have my camera animation imported into Blender, and one big issue with this is that while we do have the cube in our scene and the cameras in our outliner, when you export anything from Unreal into Blender, the scene scale is about 1% of its actual size. So I'm gonna hit N on my keyboard and go to my camera, and I'm gonna hit Alt-Shift-I with my mouse over the scale to clear all of those keyframes on the scale and then set the scale to one, one, and one. And now we should see our camera. If we lock our camera to our viewport, we can see that we have our little camera animation and the cube is right there exactly where we needed it to be. So now what I have to do with this Blender scene is I need to make sure that my end frame is exactly as long as my Unreal animation. So I'm going to set this to 720, which is exactly what we want. Scroll back and we can see that our white highlighted space is the length of our baked keyframes. So now what I can do is I can go up to File, Export, Alembic. Now, fortunately for this, we don't need to do any more fussing. I'm going to save this as the Unreal Sword Composite underscore ABC because I know this is my Alembic file, and I have a little folder here that I'm going to save my Alembics for this project. Export Alembic. Let it go. Let it do its thing. Depending on how big your scene is, it might take a little while. But now, back in Fusion, what I'm going to do is go back up to the Fusion tab up here, go to Import and Alembic Scene. We're going to navigate to that file. Click open, and it's gonna ask us this. Fortunately, unlike the FBX workflow, there's a lot less things that we have to cover, but we wanna make sure that our frame rate is exactly what we want. We wanna bring in our cameras, we wanna bring in points and meshes and UVs and normals most of the time, but if we're just doing basic stuff like this, we can just bring it in as is. Click OK. Now, if we click on this window, we see our little mini map of our stuff. We can see our two main nodes up here. We're gonna take these, copy it or cut it, Scroll back up here, click in the empty space just above our main nodes, and Control-V to paste. Now, we do have a Merge 3D node already here, but if you don't know how to do that, you can select this button to add a Merge 3D. Now, we do need a 3D renderer node, so we're going to click on this button and pipe this 3D renderer node into the merge node, or vice versa. If I hit the 1 key with my two viewports selected, we can see that we have our basic empty space inside our scene, but it's obviously not showing inside our main viewport for our render. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this cube, pipe it into the very end like so, and it's gonna merge, merge, come on, dude. Oh, come on, there we go, there we go. And now we have our cube in our scene. And the reason why I like the Alembic workflow is if you do the FBX workflow, you might have to do the dance of trying to orient your stuff towards the camera. This way, it's so much easier and it does require a blender, unfortunately, but that's also a very useful tool to learn as well. So with that said, let's use our cube to get our reference point for our position. And if we click on the transform, we can see that the values of the Olympic scene are much, much smaller and much more manageable. So I can go ahead and make a text 3D. Let's select our merge 3D node and add some text and we will just call this Talon, which is the name of the sword, and it is very, very large in this scene. If we hold Alt and middle mouse button in our 3D viewport, we can navigate around and scroll around our scene. Unfortunately, the viewport in DaVinci is weird and funky and I don't like it as much as Blender or Cinema, but hey, there's our text. We can either go up and just position this in our scene like so, 
or we could copy the cube positions. We can just go and copy that, go into the text 3D and paste like so, and then go back into that cube and get the Y data right here and paste that like so. Now from here, the orientation of our text is a little off center, so we can go to the vertical anchor and set this to that, scale it down, and now we have our text in our scene. And if we play this back like so, our camera is locked in, our type is locked in, Everything is cool. We got our little camera shake. We can see that right there with the little curve of our animation spline. And if we were to hit the single viewport and maybe scale this up a little bit, we can get a better preview of this composite. Scrub through because it is a little slow. And the text is locked into our scene exactly what we wanted it to do. So that's the workflow for Olympics. If you have been confused at any point during this tutorial, do check out my course. It is on my website and you can start learning how to use DaVinci Resolve for compositing VFX, for basic video editing, content creation, or if you just wanna post your artwork online. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or if you have questions about my course, please let me know in the comment section down below or hit me up on Instagram at John Jagsney and I'd be happy to help answer anything that you might be struggling with. With that out of the way, that is my workflow from bringing an Unreal camera and doing some basic VFX compositing principles into DaVinci Resolve. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate you spending some time with me. I hope the time was worth it because you're not getting it back, but I will leave you with the final tip and that is to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight and you'll make some gains. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.